Okay, next up is a very interesting period piece started by Richard Linklater, who directed Days and Confused many years ago. This is entitled Me and Orson Welles, and the story is told through a young 18-year-old by the name of Richard Samuels, played very well by Zac Efron. And now he gets a shot at being a part of a theatrical production of Caesar in 1937, directed and starring Orson Welles. Now, Welles is already renowned in the entertainment world. And keep in mind, this was even before the War of the Worlds radio broadcast and before Citizen Kane. Wells has played in a pure dynamite of a performance by Christian McKay, who really put together the puzzle that really was Orson Welles, and all the eccentric attributes that made him such an interesting person. Now, this film has some good little stories in it, including the character of Samuels, who falls for the blonde bombshell known as Sonia Jones, the production assistant of Wells, played quite well by Claire Danes, perhaps her best role in... Well, I don't know how long. And, of course, the young Richard has a $5 bet that he'll get with her before anyone else does. Kind of seems scummy, but uh, that's just how some people work. This film does a great job in capturing an era and, and what passed for entertainment and what really made the entertainment world function in terms of theatrical production. Now, the character of Richard Samuels, played by Efron, is not a complex individual. He's just another kid living in the world. It doesn't really stand out. But in most movies, that's what makes... Those are, the, those are the most interesting people around in some movies. I'd rather an, un, uh, an uninteresting character be well-written than a very interesting personality character be overwritten. And it happens in many, 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 many movies. Now, a film about Wells, focusing on him and only him, might have been just another boring, boring biopic that we've seen a million times already, telling it through the eyes of somebody else and merely focusing on one certain era rather than their whole lives was a lot better. And in my opinion, you get a better understanding of a real-life figure in just a certain time period of their lives. That is what made The Last King of Scotland work so well back in 2006 with Forrest Whitaker, the best film of the year that year, at least for me anyway. And that's what makes, in my opinion, most biopics work. Even movies like Walk the Line, which, yeah, it focused on a long time in Johnny Cash's life from when he was a kid to his, the peak of his career. But you notice that it didn't go further with his whole gospel thing and his... Uh, you know, his relapses and his comeback. They just focused on mainly, they did, of course, the 10 minute scenes as him as a kid, and, of course, right into his musical fame from 1955 when he hit it big to 1969 or 1968, the Folsom Prison concert. So close to 15 years. It didn't focus on his whole life. In my opinion, a biopic should never always do that. Now, Efron really surprised me in one of the earliest episodes I did of this show with the movie he did, of course, called Seventeen Again. He showed me in that film, despite not being a huge step by any means from his normal comfort zone of genre, that he has what it takes to make it as an actor. Efron has a good presence on screen, sort of reminding me a bit of a young Rob Lowe from the 80s. But this film belongs to newcomer McKay, who is just electric here, and there are times he goes over the top, but that's who Wells was. And he doesn't take it any higher than is necessary. And that is what, and that is what kept me thoroughly entertained. I didn't roll my eyes once. I was just captured by this character. I've always been interested in who Orson Welles was and the, what he brought to the table, and that's what made Welles so interesting. Now, the subplots in this film were interesting enough to keep me entertained, I suppose, despite not being great, but McKay's performance was more than enough to make this a pass for me, so I give me and Orson Welles three and a half stars out of five.